Hey class, Kelly here. I'll be your instructor this semester. I'm so excited to work together. This class is a little bit different than other classes you've taken in that the purpose of this class is to prepare you with one very specialized skill. By the time you're done with this course, you will be able to work independently as a medical scribe. In Unit 1, we're going to cover the basics of the history of medical scribing, very brief history of medical scribing, what a medical scribe is, where they work, and how you become one. Let's start with what is a medical scribe? The better question actually is who is a medical scribe? Medical scribes are providers, partners, and documentation. What that means is a medical scribe completes all the medical documentation on behalf of a provider. When I say provider, I mean physicians, physician's assistants, nurse practitioners. Medical scribes can also work for optometrists, physical therapists, etc. But for the scope of this course, we're most commonly going to be working with providers. The medical scribing industry started predominantly when electronic medical records became handy. The important thing for you to take away here is that medical scribes helped the physicians that were used to having a secretary on hand. Anything that needed to be done that was clerical, in putting medications, calling a certain physician, calling a nurse, tracking something down, they had somebody readily available that they could scribble on the paper or give them a quick, hey, can you help me with this? And they would do it. Well, then the EMR started. All of a sudden, physicians were expected to do all of these clerical tasks that they used to have assistance with. This caused massive headaches in the workflow and patient care. Many would argue that those headaches still exist thanks to electronic medical records. And believe me, I could go on for literally days on I agree. But we'll save it for another day. Medical scribes are able to input everything into the electronic medical record on behalf of the physician. There is one exception, and that is medical decision making, which is a small bit at the bottom of every chart that basically says, hey, this is why I did this with the patient for these medical reasons. Medical scribes are not able to do medical decision making because they're not clinical personnel. Medical scribes on average cut down two to three hours per day on clinical tasks for providers. The whole point of medical scribes is to let providers do what they went to medical school, PA school, nursing school for, which is to take care of patients. Medical scribes focus on the keyboard, the computer, the EMR, the non-clinical tasks, so providers can do what they love, which is take care of patients. The patients love it too. They're not there to talk to you the side of your face while you're looking at the computer. Medical scribing is a treatment, not a cure, for medical documentation burnout. Okay, so that's how medical scribing started. Let's talk more about medical scribing today. Where does the medical scribe work? Medical scribes can work anywhere that providers work, whether that's in the emergency department, inpatient setting, outpatient setting in literally every specialty, making rounds at the hospital, surgical centers. Again, anywhere you find a provider, you can find a medical scribe and a medical scribe can work there. What hours does a medical scribe typically work? Well, just like where they work, they work whenever providers work. So if that's the emergency department, it's around the clock, 24 hours a day, 365. If you're working in an outpatient clinical setting, then you're gonna follow whatever their office hours are. Scribes can even be on call. If you're working with a surgeon who could go into the hospital at any given time, a medical scribe could be right there with them when they get the call to go in to do surgery. The why of medical scribing, we talked about briefly in the history, but it's worth mentioning again. There is a huge issue with medical documentation burnout and how cumbersome electronic medical records are in the day-to-day -day practice of practitioners. Medical scribes are the treatment for medical documentation burnout, not the cure. We gotta start somewhere. Now, how to become a medical scribe. This is where things get dicey. Medical scribing is a completely unregulated industry. In healthcare, can you imagine? What I mean by that is there are no local, state, or federal regulations on medical scribing. That means whoever is providing your medical scribe training 
bears a huge responsibility to make sure that you are well educated in the responsibilities that you have as a medical scribe. Additionally, it's as important for providers, hospital administrators, or networks to understand what the liabilities are and to make sure that they're well protected. That starts with quality training, which is why I'm so glad you are here today and we're able to work together in this course. By the end of this course, you're gonna be able to know how to successfully work as a medical scribe in any clinical setting. We're gonna make sure that you know what you can do, what you cannot do, you understand critical legal terms such as protected health information, and know how to keep you, your provider, and the patient safe. The last thing we're gonna to touch on this lecture is what a medical scribe may and may not do. Medical scribes are considered non-clinical personnel. What that means is, as a medical scribe, you and I have not taken the appropriate testing to be able to do clinical decision making or administer clinical functions. Now, this is where people get primarily confused on how a medical scribe is different from, say, a medical assistant or a nursing assistant. Clinical assistants, nursing assistants, medical assistants, they all go through specialized training to make sure that they can complete clinical tasks. Now, this is also a very great area depending on what part of the United States or the world that you live in. In most circumstances, the medical assistant or the nursing assistant are actually operating under the license of the provider they're working for. Medical scribes also fall in this same category. So if you want to get really technical, a medical scribe and a medical assistant really aren't different things at all. The only thing that changes is how they are trained. And also that medical assisting has just been around longer and there are more programs that say this is how you can become a medical assistant. Medical assistants conversely are often thrown into roles where they thought that they were gonna be taking blood pressure and administering shots and medications and they find themselves really playing more of a role as a medical scribe in which case they're doing all the documentation on behalf of the provider and they haven't had adequate training on what information is needed, where do they put the information, what do you need to actually be able to build the chart, what is the billing and coding, is all the information we need in here so that the providers, their offices, health networks are reimbursed for the quality care that they provided. <laughs> this is where I personally start to lose my mind because it's a problem easily solved if we put the correct information out there. Bringing it back to the start of this rant, you're going to hear a couple rants in my class and I get off topic every now and then, take it as comic relief, is that a medical scribe is considered non-clinical personnel. So if you don't want to jump into the gray area at all, just remember medical scribes keep their hands on the keyboard. Now, in my experience in medical scribing, people go into medical scribing for one of two reasons. One is for a career opportunity in itself. Two is for clinical experience. So you may be panicked like, Kelly, I'm in this class because I need clinical experience to get into med school, PA school, nursing school, PT school, anything pre-health related, clinical experience. Although you're considered non-clinical personnel, medical scribing counts for clinical hours. This is because medical scribing gives you an unparalleled opportunity to be involved in literally every single step of patient's care. Not only involved, but you're playing an active role. You're completing the documentation in real time for the provider. You're understanding what information is needed in their history. You're understanding why we're ordering this medication as opposed to that, and what dosage we're giving it, and what method that is being taken and why we're sending them home versus sending them to their next level of care. If you don't believe me, reach out to your prospective school. Ask them, does medical scribing count for clinical hours? And you're gonna find not only does it count, but it's preferred. The reason I got into this whole industry is I was trying to make the switch from working in marketing and communications into the medical field. If you're curious on more details on my story, I'm happy to share it with you. But the key takeaway here is I called every perspective, and the list was about 10 deep, medical school that I was interested in and PA school that I was interested in and said, hey, 
I have no background in what I think that I want to do here. What can I do to get some relevant experience? One, make sure that this is for me, and two, be a competitive applicant. The resounding answer was medical scribing, which is how you and I met today. So if your goal is to continue your medical career, I'm so excited you're here because you are going to get the best experience and be such a competitive applicant. You're looking for a career opportunity that you can start today. Medical scribing is here for you too. Okay, so we covered a lot of background information on what a medical scribe is, how medical scribing started, where they work, and how they're considered non-clinical personnel. More than anything from this unit one lecture, I want you to take away that I am here for you. We're gonna work hard throughout this course, but you're gonna walk away with the skills that you need to be a professional medical scribe and also be well-trained if you would like to sit for a certification exam. I'm so excited you're here. Let's have a great course together.